Welcome to another episode of Sempre Inter TV. Today we'll be talking about the game with Inter and Benevento. Share your comments down below on your thoughts on the match and don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel if you're new. Let's dig in. For the first half there isn't really much to talk about other than um, it was good to take the lead early and uh, it was quite fortunate the way it went in. A fairly messy goal. Ericsson's free kick was a good delivery into the box, in a dangerous position, and uh, yeah, just took a deflection um, and went in top corner, simple as that. So there wasn't really much else to say. Um, Benevento did look fairly decent going forward, um, especially earlier on, in the first like 25 minutes or so. They, looked, they, they did look um, like they could pose a threat, uh, but that was like snuffed out pretty pretty quick and they didn't really pose a threat much afterwards. They did have a penalty shout which was deemed to be outside the box which is why VAR didn't rule on it uh, which they're not allowed to. So the foul, once you saw the freeze frame it was outside the box. Renokia did look very shaky um, and lap, he was making Lapidula look a lot better than he actually was with all due respect. Um, yeah, uh, Renokia just shows more of the level he's on rather than Lapidula. Uh, other than that uh, Hakimi and Barella link up was good. Ericsson looks much more comfortable, and uh, other than that, it was a positive first half. Uh, the build up play was good. Um, arguably, we should have been ahead by more, but um, yeah, not much else to say. In terms of the second half, uh, it was a polar opposite of the first, really. Uh, Inter came out really pressing hard, and they were really making Benevento like, struggle to build out from the back. Uh, so that was really good to see. Lautaro finally ended his goal drought. Um, it was a good goal, very well taken, and um, yeah, it was, I was happy to see that. And then obviously Lukaku bags a brace as well. So from going from four games without either of them scoring, both of them scored in the same match. So that was brilliant. Really happy to see that. And hopefully it's a sign of things going forward. That's Lukaku now on 14 goals, uh, one behind Ronaldo. And uh, yeah, he's really making his team. Uh, staking a claim, sorry, for that uh, Capo Cananieri. Other than that, um, honourable shout-outs go to Bastoni. I thought he had a really good game. Um, I can't remember the last time I've seen a defender come through like this, especially an attacking defender as well. He's really confident on the ball and he plays it really well. So I'm really happy to have him in the squad. And uh, other than that, um, yeah, there's not much else to say. It was a really controlled second half. Uh, Benevento didn't get a look in. They didn't have a shot. And yeah, um, Inter really, really controlled it. And this is what you need to see when we're playing against the smaller clubs in the Syria. We need to control it. We need to make sure that we don't go go behind early on and make life difficult for ourselves. So yeah, if this is what life's like when Conte isn't on the bench and Stellini is, then I'm all for it. What for this week has got to be both of our strikers finally ending the goal drought. I think um, they both played really well. Uh, Lautaro, not so much in the first half, but in the second half, his intensity was really, really good. Um, he was really pressing high up the pitch and displayed that with the uh, Lukaku's goal. Um, if it wasn't for him cutting out uh, the Benevento keeper's pass, then Lukaku wouldn't have scored that. Uh, they were playing really risky passing and that's where we made them pay. So, yeah, uh, hopefully there's more of that to come. And now that puts Lutaro in double figures for the season in all competitions. That's Lukaku on 14 goals, one behind Ronaldo. And, um, I mean, for him going four games without scoring a goal to still be in one behind Ronaldo shows how important he has been for Inter. And, uh, yeah, if we are to continue to push on for the title, then we need him scoring. And, uh, yeah, I think all of us would be happy with that. I had to pick a flop for this match, but I think I have to go with Andrea Ranocchia. Um, I just think it shows the current level he's at now, and we definitely need strengthening in the centre-back uh, backup positions anyway, because if one of the main three go out suspended or injured or need a rest, then to have someone like Ranocchia... Um, to fall back on isn't really, it doesn't really give one confidence that we would be okay. So, 
yeah, that's my thought for today. There's not much really else to add because it was hard to pick one in the end because we did play so well. But um, yeah, I think if I have to go with anything, it would be with Andrea Renaukia.